so much for joining Nitin. Uh, what's your sense? Uh, end of earnings season, almost all the big numbers out. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, morning, Neeraj. Uh, I think uh, this has been a fairly impressive quarter from the earnings point of view. Uh, you know, broadly, the earnings have continued the momentum that the market was expecting. Obviously, there was a fair amount of expectation built in, given that the markets had rallied uh, just before coming into the end of the, the quarter. So, I think broadly, we are fairly pleased with the numbers we've seen, uh, and I think there is obviously divergence within sectors. But you know, the core themes of India Inc., which was you know, the, the strong consumption-led growth in the, in the domestic economy has actually played out really well. And even some export-driven sectors like IT have done, done really, you know, uh, wonderful numbers this quarter. So I think broadly we are very comfortable. Uh, we think the markets will, will continue to, to look for, uh, you know, this growth, you know, moving forward as well. Uh, you know, Reliance came out with numbers. Uh, there has been uh, quite a lot of weightage, uh, you know, uh, that's been assigned uh, to the oil and gas space, particularly uh, the kind of domestic and foreign interest that's coming into the sector. Uh, what's your outlook uh, on uh, the space over the next three to six months in terms of the possible changes that can come by developments announcements? I think there is a, uh, obviously internal changes that are driven by more the policy level, uh, you know, deregulations, clarity on subsidy sharing. Uh, some of that will be expected as the Indian oil, Indian oil uh, FPO comes on board. So I think that's one thing to look forward to. Uh, the other are obviously external changes and I think the biggest important factor there is what happens to the price of oil globally. Uh, obviously the more it rises, you know, the harder it gets for us to, to maintain uh, the balance sheets of these companies unless there is full deregulation on, on the uh, pricing front. So I think at this point in time our view on the sector is fairly neutral. Uh, you know, given what we saw in the Reliance numbers as well, uh, you know, there wasn't any, any big positive surprise, uh, barring discovery of new fields which obviously you know, one has to wait and watch out for. So I think at this point in time our view is fairly neutral on the sector. Uh, you know, we are obviously keeping an eye out on what happens on the global side, uh, especially to the price of crude. Right. Uh, Nitin, uh what about the banking lot, uh, especially ICICI Bank that came out with a stellar set of numbers? That's also some key mid-cap banks as well. I think the banking uh, sector has probably been the brightest star in the whole earning season. Uh, not just ICICI, but actually almost every bank has uh, given pretty stellar performance. Especially some of the mid-cap uh, PSU banks have actually have outdone themselves in, in terms of what people expected from them. So I think uh, we see uh, earnings growth of around 25 odd percent across the board. The larger banks will obviously also, uh, you know, we expect them to deliver the same kind of numbers. You might see some better numbers from the smaller lot, but I think on an average, this is uh, one of our top picks. We think this will continue to be a proxy to the economic growth. Uh, credit offtake is fairly strong. Uh, net interest margins have been maintained really, really well by most banks. Uh, you know, NPAs are not so much of a concern, barring one or two, you know, obviously individual cases. So I think from our point of view, this continues to be one of the most uh, promising sectors to stay invested in. Uh, and I've been a proponent of the sector for almost a year and a half now. So I think from up, you know, from where we sit, we continue to look like this really, really a lot, especially the PSU names. Coal India list later this week, uh, Nitin, uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, expectation riding on that issue and the proposed listing. Uh, also, there's of course that expectation of the refund money getting back into the markets. How do you think, I mean, these two events would play out uh, individually, the listing, uh, the issue, the company and uh, the money that uh, went into the uh, entire uh, process? Again, I think, uh, uh, you know, one has to wait and watch at what price the issue lists. The expectation is obviously to list at, uh, you know, anywhere from a 20 to 25 percent uh, premium over issue price. Uh, which may not be unfounded given that the price was actually fairly attractively, you know, done. So I think there will be obviously some pent up, uh, you know, demand that wasn't met through the IPO that will be, you know, bought from the market. We expect the, the issue to be actually a fairly good investment opportunity given that it's one of the top 10 companies in, you know, in the country even by market cap. And obviously it's a, it's a global, uh, you know, scarce commodity play. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting issue to to watch out for the listing. On the question of the money coming back into the market, you know, clearly we've, we've all heard the, the liquidity issues that have been surrounding the markets, not just the, the equity markets, but actually the overall financial markets. Part of the reason obviously was the large uh, 
blockage of monies that happened due to the coal India issue. So I think a lot of that easing of liquidity will obviously mean that fund flows will, will should resume back into, into all segments of financial markets, including equities. All right, Nitin, uh, I understand I have to let you go. Uh, running short of time you are, but thanks so much uh, for taking the time out today and joining us and giving us that bit of perspective. Uh,